the Chiefs topple the 49ers. Ha <laughs> ha! That system quarterback, Brock Purdy, goes down 25-22. And if you wonder what a non-system quarterback is, that would be Patrick Mahomes. And this was a case study on the difference between system guy and non-system guy. Advantage non-system guy in this one. Mahomes passing for 333 yards, half the side of the devil, and a pair of touchdowns, and Kansas City. They were already a dynasty, but now they keep adding on to that as they've now won back-to-back Lombardi trophies and the good times, the good vibrations continue for the gold standard in the NFL, the Chiefs. So let us discuss the question. What are your initial thoughts on Kansas City taking down San Francisco in Super Bowl 58 to add another championship to the resume of Patrick Mahomes. So I've got plastic surgery, bingo card, and bullseye. And we will combine all of these things together, and we're going to make a nice vacation, which is what the 49ers can go on now because they didn't win. They don't have to worry about going through any kind of parade or anything like that. They're losers. (laughs) Ha-ha, losers. All right, so. Uh, A, uh, the initial thought I had was uh, this is what you would hope. Now, I didn't think it was an amazing game. There were some mistakes. There were some turnovers. But got off to a scoreless start first quarter. Uh, You're going to remember the back-and-forth nature of the second half. That's what you're going to remember, and you're going to forget about the fact that nobody scored in the first quarter. But there was a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And the way I would describe uh, this game in the fourth quarter and overtime, Super Bowl 58, it was like plastic surgery. It was nip and tuck is, uh, is what it was. The Chiefs came back from 10 points down, and they had a late drive. They tie the game, and that sets up the overtime. 49ers get bailed out by a penalty to keep a drive going. Otherwise, they would have punted the ball. The game would have ended much sooner. Uh, They would have punted the ball. There was a holding call against Kansas City in the secondary that kept the 49ers drive. They went down, kept it going. They went down. They kicked the field goal. took a long time. The Chiefs methodically go down. They had to convert a couple of plays where they were facing elimination against the 49ers defense. But the absolute backbreaker, the absolute backbreaker for the 49ers, the Chiefs as the two-point dogs in this game, they end up winning the championship, and uh, we thought the spread was Fugazi. We told you at the end of last week, this guy Billy Walters, the uh, the professional gambler, the the god of gambling, and he said the line was wrong, and we thought the line was wrong, and turned out the line was wrong, uh, that the, the right team uh, was the underdog, and in the end, uh, the 49ers proved to be frauds. I think everyone knows that that watched this, uh, this team uh, that they listen, they they favored fine. They had a slightly better record during the regular season, but the team you wanted in a close game late was the team that was wearing the the red jerseys, not the team wearing the white jerseys in this game. Now, page two here. How did the Travis Kelsey uh, singing "Viva Las Vegas" to Jim Nance uh, on the post game sit with you? Did you did you see that? Were you watching? Did you stick around once the game ended there? you like Travis Kelsey singing Viva Las Vegas? Well, it was definitely unorthodox. Jim Nance, who very awkward uh, always. Uh, here, in fact, just to prove, if you didn't hear it, uh, we'll play it. Even if you heard it, we'll play it again so you can hear it again. But this is the uh, the rather awkward moment here. Jim Nance, very straight-laced, always uh, has like a, a stick up his kazoo there. But uh, here's, uh, here's what it sounded like. All right, and so, listen, uh, is it possible somebody spiked the Gatorade? Is it conceivable? I I know there was a shot of uh, Taylor Swift chugging a beer 
in the luxury box. You think like somewhere on the sidelines there, Travis Kelsey was completely schnockered. He he sounds like the guy that calls up that loves the Chiefs. He sounds like that guy. Yeah. I mean, he was just playing in the Super Bowl 10 minutes prior to having that conversation. I did check my bingo card, and I, I did not have Kelsey pounding beers in the huddle on my bingo card there. Uh, he, he also did not mention uh, Taylor Swift on the, the CBS broadcast after the game. He did not mention her. There was a prop bet whether or not Kelsey would mention uh, her name. Uh, the MVP did not mention her name, so if you bet that prop that that would not happen, then you ended up winning uh, for whatever for whatever that's worth. I love that Elvis is still coming up. That's the signature song. There have been a few other songs about Vegas, but nothing like Viva Las Vegas. Like There's nothing that quite matches the impact of that. And uh, there's st- there's still- Elvis has been dead for how many years, and there's still Elvis impersonators. There's the Elvis Chapel uh, in, in Vegas and all that, and... Then that, later on, not only did you get the Elvis, but in that soundbite, and then uh, a little bit later on, you had the Beastie Boys getting uh, some love there. You have to fight for your right to party. Which, uh, one thing the Chiefs do not have to fight for is their right to party, as they know how to party. They definitely know how to party, and I can imagine that's going on right now, as we speak at some secret location, which is probably not even that secret. It's probably right in the middle of the action there. On the Strip in Vegas, uh, there's all kinds of debauchery that we'll hear about in the next couple of days that are going on right now as we speak. Now, the last word here, I would like to address something else that happened right after the game. If you're paying close attention, I know I was. I was in a bit of a food coma, but I was still paying attention. So, James Brown, uh, CBS Sports James Brown. Very proud of himself. He had a line on the post-game broadcast. He said, Brock Purdy is no longer a game manager. He is a game executive. Cute line, right? Cute line. Does that work for you? Of course not. (laughs) What is James James Brown drinking to? What the hell's wrong with James Brown? My God. What are you doing? Did JB realize the Niners lost the game because of Brock Purdy? Did he re- if the Niners have scored a touchdown, Mahomes doesn't get the ball, dummy. And then guess what? The, the Mahomes celebration doesn't happen. And then Brock Purdy. Then you can say Brock Purdy's not a game manager. No. They settled for a field goal. That's a game manager move, stupid. What's wrong with you? Listen, that is what Brock Purdy is. Fine. You got to the Super Bowl. Congratulations. Congratulations. Don't confuse that with what Mahomes is. And it's why well, Mahomes is so much ahead of everyone. It's, that's, not, that's not the point. The point is that Brock Purdy is the guy we thought he was. And he went out there and played like we thought he was. He wanted to crown him, crown his ass. But the guy, the guy lost the Super Bowl and you're trying to pump his tires? What are you, you're an idiot. Seriously. This is not the time for Listen, if I'm the Niners, I go out and get Kirk Cousins. Because he's better. Cousins is better than Purdy. And if I had a chance to get Kirk Cousins, I would rather have Cousins than Brock Purdy. I would. And the Niners, if you gave true serum to Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan, who knows a thing or two about losing big games, and you said, okay, next two years, you, you would you rather have Kirk Cousins or Brock Purdy? You would take Kirk Cousins? Of course you would. But James Brown practicing the art of manifestation on this one. Uh, he's like trying to speak it into existence, and he's just so proud of himself. You could hear the other guys, oh, that was a good line. Oh, great line, wonderful line. He just went out there and became, as a game manager cost his team the Super Bowl. Oh, he's no longer a game manager. My fat ass, he's no longer a game manager. My God. Stop, 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 stop. It, it's so stupid that this stuff's going on. Brock Purdy is a younger Jimmy Garoppolo. You didn't win with Garoppolo. You got Garoppolo 2.0. Congratulations. He's not even as good as Nick Foles. All right? not, Brock Purdy, not as, good as, not as good as Brad Johnson. I can go on. You get the point. You get the point. I mean, I'm sitting there. Why? I mean, what are we doing? I mean, seriously, what is going on here? 
what are you, what are you trying to accomplish there? I mean, you, you missed the bullseye by a wide margin. By a wide margin.